the Sunday School lesson for February the 18th, 2024 is Faith in the Times of Trouble. Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 11, verse 14, verse 16, verses 19 through 23, and verses 26 through 27. Welcome, viewers and subscribers, to my channel, The Backstory and More. If you are interested in knowing what happens before each Sunday school lesson, you are at the right place. I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, and offer a brief lesson summary. The backstory. Let's begin. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps. Now, a satrap is a provincial governor in the ancient Persian Empire to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. Setting the trap. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So, King Darius put the decree in writing. This is the end of the backstory, and today's lesson begins with verse 10. Verses 10 through 11. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Verse 14, when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Verse 16, so the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Verses 19 through 20, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Verses 21 through 22, Daniel answered, 
May the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Verse 23, the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trust in his God. Verse 26, I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. Verse 27, he rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. A brief summary. The local rulers were determined to eliminate Daniel. Their obstacle was Daniel's impeccable character. But these men knew that Daniel would not compromise when it came to faith. The men went as a group to flex their numerical muscle. They falsely claimed that the rulers had all agreed on the idea for a decree that no one could pray to any god or human being during the next 30 days except to you, your majesty. It is obvious that Daniel, who was one of those rulers, had neither seen nor approved it. The Persians prided themselves on ruling humanely. They did not use torture to keep subjects in line, but generously provided for their well-being. The famous Cyrus Cylinder, an ancient declaration, set forth religious tolerance, abolition of slavery, and freedom of choice as hallmarks of Persian rule. Yet the Persians still needed to maintain order and respect so they established a strict legal system. All royal decrees were enforced and could not be broken, not even by the king. This policy not only deterred potential lawbreakers, but also limited corruption among the officials. Since the king himself kept these laws, the officials could not bend them for selfish gain. Daniel could have protected himself in various ways. One, a possible strategy was secrecy. He could shut his windows and pray. Two, he could leave his windows open but alter his posture so no one could tell he was praying. Three, a potential strategy would be abstinence from prayer for 30 days. And four, and yet another was political change. Daniel could use his favor with Darius to expose the official's agenda and undermine the law they had forced into effect. Daniel resisted these temptations instead of viewing persecution as an ill to be avoided. He saw it as an opportunity for witness. How would the Persian world ever learn? that there was a God in heaven worth serving wholeheartedly if his followers did not publicly live out his claim on their lives. Thank you so much for watching. Join me soon for the next backstory and more. Stay safe and may God bless.